Hi, I'm Kendall with the Rawls Group. The old African proverb, it takes a village, illustrates the essential nature of a team approach to succession planning. Succession planning is a complex endeavor. As such, it requires leveraging the expertise of a diversity of backgrounds. Collaboration and different expert opinions provides a 360 degree approach, ensuring the possible, probable, and potential issues impacting your long-term vision are addressed. To provide insight into common questions received from business owners, we are leveraging the village of our valued strategic relationships. As you listen to this episode, you'll be able to immediately apply the key takeaways and you'll come back for more. Now we're going to focus on what's the best way to make decisions in uncertain times? I'm Crystal Faulkner and I'm a partner with MCM CPAs and Advisors. I'm also a professional EOS implementer. And what I explain to my clients when I'm working with leadership teams implementing EOS is that when you have economic uncertainty, whether it's COVID-19 or any other economic uncertainty that causes us to have to make decisions, it causes us to be much more solutions oriented, sometimes faster than we have historically had to deal with, one of the tools that I help leadership teams learn to solve problems is a tool called IDS. And I stands for identify, D is discuss, and S is solve. And so what we do is leadership teams come together, they prioritize the most important things that we need to solve today. We discuss them as a group with no one politicking or continuing to push their idea forward. We have a discussion where everyone contributes and then we very specifically move to solve. And here's the thing, it's critical to, to take some action steps away from the discussion. So many times people just are paralyzed by indecision because they don't know what the next step's going to be or they don't, they're fearful. But if you can at least come up to a solution and then ultimately walk out of the room with some executionable action item, you can always regroup if you need to change something, modify something, the key here is take action. First, you need to gather as much data as you can. And be sure to talk to your colleagues and peers to get a diverse set of views and opinions. Don't always go to the yes men and women in your organization. You want to hear all views, dissenting views, to get the most information before you make a decision. Another thing you can consider doing uh, to help with employee morale and anxieties is do an internal anonymous survey to get their input on what you're proposing and what your plans are. And always be flexible and ready to adapt to a dynamic situation. Well, let's start the question with a little bit of background. I wear two hats. As a CFP, I work with families and financial on their financial planning and wealth management issues, but I also am a small business owner. Um, as the managing partner of our firm, I wear a lot of different hats and I wouldn't change this for anything because as I work with my uh, business owner clients, I can relate firsthand to the issues at hand um, because I've had those issues myself. I don't consider myself to have more insight to business than somebody else out there, but I have a, a unique advantage that over the last 30 plus years of doing this, I've been able to gain some unique insight from some of my different clients is, as they've mentored me and as we struggle with these problems over the years, um, I, which I believe give me a unique perspective um, into decision making and matters regarding, uh, regarding business. So what have I learned about decision making? Well, first off, let's break the sentence down a little bit. In uncertain times, that struck me on my unique as I read the, the question uh, to start with. Well, when are we in certain times? Now, I know today it seems like we are dealing with unique issues of the day, uh, but should that really change our decision-making process? Let's be careful and not let the, de the uh, decision tail wag the dog. Uh, let's have a process. Will that process be perfect? Absolutely not. Will we make bad decisions? Yes, we will. But I tell you, I would soon be consistent in my decision making than lucky anytime. Now, this worked for me. It might not work for you in your industry, but I need to hear a pretty compelling argument about why it won't work uh, for you or your particular industry. Um, so let's start. 
I'm naturally a skeptic, and I think this works to my advantage. I'm not from Missouri, but the Show Me logo fits me well. Within my business, I need to reject more ideas than I need to say yes to. Um, from a, uh, the skeptical perspective helps me really sort out the BS. Uh, fair warning, being a skeptic um, doesn't necessarily make us happier people. Uh, for my fellow skeptics, we have all thought to ourselves after having that conversation, uh, the bliss one must feel uh, from being so clueless many times in some of these conversations. So um, next step, back to the basics. In sports, we've all heard going back to the basics. This applies in business also. Does this fit our core competency, um, our core values? Is this what we really do and is this what we're really good at? These are core questions that we need to be asking ourselves as we're looking to change direction uh, or move our business in a potential different direction. Be consistent and see your decision through. Truly give the decision time to develop and to truly be tested. Trust yourself. You clearly have got a track record or you wouldn't be where you're at today. So have a little confidence and a little bit of faith in yourself that you are on the right path. Uh, with that said though, it is okay and we occasionally need to admit defeat. People get so paralyzed and are afraid to make a mistake that they fall into the, what I call the no decision decision. Uh, remember, not to decide something is making a decision. So let's recap. Be a skeptic. Back to the basics. Be consistent. Trust yourself. It's okay to admit defeat and don't fall into the no decision decision trap. So hopefully that was helpful um, and a little bit of insight of what I've learned uh, over the years. Uh, I know my email is going to be part of this video, so please feel free to reach out. You've got a differing opinion, uh, you've got something to add, uh, uh, some way to have the conversation. Let, let's start that conversation as one of the joys of what I do for a living is the interaction with uh, with people uh, regarding different business topics and we can never quit learning on these topics. So um, thank you. So the question I've been asked is how do you make decisions in uncertain times? And certainly we're currently living in uncertain times. They're volatile, they're uncertain, they're complex, and they're ambiguous. So the best way to make a decision today is the same way that it was a good way to make a decision before there was a pandemic involved in the crisis. Step number one is you want to identify the problem. Too many times people get all wrapped up in symptoms rather than causes. And a lot of times a symptom may be something that goes along with it. It's conditional, but it is not causative. So what we want to look at are what are the real causative factors for the problem you're dealing with. A lot of times I hear our clients tell me uh, what we really need in our organization is a problem solver. And I tell them the first thing you need is a problem identifier. Let's work on the symptoms first and then we can get to the root causes of those symptoms and deal with the real problem instead of just what appears to be what is causing us a lot of angst at the moment. Step number two is to identify some alternatives because in many instances we approach a problem as if everything we had is a tool or a hammer and all of the problems are a nail. So part of what we have to do is figure out what tools are available for us right now to begin resolving some of the issues that are associated with the causes. Step number three is choose. Choice is a very difficult option, and many times we decide to develop so many options that we become option-bound, and it really paralyzes us and keeps us from moving forward, which in essence is step number four, and that's implement the solution that you've decided that you want to follow and put in place. In order to have that happen without a great deal of resistance from other people, you need to do two, three things. Step number one, you have to let people know that conditions have changed and that there's a need to do some things differently to take care of the problem. Step number two is you have to make the solution simple enough so that they're not intimidated by it. And step number three is you have to give the old way of doing things that may in fact have created the problem that you now have to deal with a decent funeral. 
And a way that you do that is to remind people that up until now, the way that we used to do things was a great aid to us because it provided us consistency and predictability. From this point forward, especially in uncertain times, we're going to be dealing with things that are uncertain, they're complex, and they're ambiguous. So keep it simple, give the old way a decent funeral, and give people time to adjust to the new solutions to what may have been old problems. Thank you to our strategic partners, The Village, for participating and sharing your perspectives. Do you have a burning question you want to discuss with an expert? Feel free to submit it via the Ask an Expert link featured on the page. Continue to listen to this series now or come back later for more. Each question featured may want you to learn something new.